Hi everybody. When you're browsing through various web pages, you're going to be running into links. These things that you click on to jump from one page to another, to jump to their site altogether, or to bring up your email editor and all sorts of related things. Now the thing is, links are very popular. You use them all the time. You see them all the time. You might even create them you know, every now and then. But here's the thing though, despite how commonly used they are, they aren't always very interesting. They often look very plain when you hover over them and track with them, nothing really interesting goes on. But hey, we're gonna fix that with this video. In this video, we're gonna learn all about how to add some animations to make our links come to life a little bit. And the way we're gonna do that is by first having a history lesson. Back in the day, depending on how long you've been working with the internet, links were not really exciting things. You really couldn't do much to them. They had a very default look and feel. They had an old school font. They were underlined. And by default, they had, the, had this blue color, which we call the normal state. And then when you click on a link and you visit it, what's behind it, if you were to go back to that link, it'll be colored differently to indicate that you visited it. And that'll be in this weird purple color. And then if you were to click on a link but not release the mouse click, it'll be in an active state and it'll be underlined red. Now, a few years later, you could actually use some CSS to modify the normal visited and active states, but that was pretty much it and there really wasn't a whole lot of interesting things going on. But that was then, and this is today. You know, over the years, we actually got a lot of cool ways of making your links do some interesting things. And let's look at some examples of this, actually. So what we have here is a very simple page, just has some list of Halloween ideas that I may or may not actually follow through on. But here's what links look like by default. They're blue, they're underlined, nothing really interesting happens. That's kind of what we saw in the previous slide. But what we can do though are more interesting things. Like in this case, when I hover over the link, notice that the underline is not visible by default, but hovering over it actually allows you to see it by having it fade in. That's kind of cool and kind of a much different take on what we saw before. And if you want to go really crazy, you can actually change the background color as well. Like in this case, notice that when I'm hovering over an element, the background color of the link doesn't just appear, it actually slides in from the bottom or what looks like it's sliding in from the, from the bottom. And in this video, we're actually gonna look at how to create these three effects, well, two effects that I primarily showed you, but they're actually, you know, a few sub effects, some, you know, ways of getting there that I will also highlight because it's kind of cool. So we'll be looking at about three effects, how to do an underline when you hover over a link, how to change the background color, that's an easy one, I'll be, and then we kind of close it all up with the really cool background color change where the color actually you know, fades into view or slides into view from the very bottom. So to help you out with this, I actually created a code pen pen that you can actually use as a starting point. So some of the HTML that you would normally need to manually type in, you can copy and paste. And the video description has a link to it as well. So you don't have to feel like you have to read these weirdly capitalized letters, you know, if you don't want to. And it'll look something like this. We'll just have the starting page where you see our link in your example with all its, you know, unstyled glory, you know, blue with nothing really going on. And then you can continue from here with the rest of the video, or you can use your favorite code editor if you want. In my case, that is always the Atom editor. So yeah, I'm gonna be in, in this page right now so that way I can just keep, you know, you can see a live preview of what I'm doing while I'm actually working on it. And you don't have to type this in, this is purely just for the video itself. I'm gonna have to zoom properly so that what you see on the screen is a little larger than what is normally available. All right, so now let's get started. Let's actually look at how to make our links pop and come to life. So let's first, let's look at the page, look at the styles primarily. We don't have too much going on here. We just have a list element that has some default styling to make it look like the way it does, you know, font size and a margin bottom. And we have a markup right here that essentially defines the list of items that we have. And we have the heading tag that represents the Halloween ideas heading. So the first thing we'll do is just kind of get the underline out of the way and change the blue color to a slightly nicer blue color. So I'm going to do LIA, set a select selector there to ensure that we are styling the link elements inside the list. And let's give it a color value of hashtag 00, and I have it written over there, 66FF. And that gives you a slightly different color, like you know, a more modern color in my opinion. And then let's get the underlines out of the way. So text, decoration, none. And this ensures that our links are no longer underlined. Pretty neat, right? So that's pretty straightforward. And now what we wanna do is ensure that when we hover over the link, the underline appears. So one way we might be able to do this is by using the LIA selector, add the hover pseudo selector, and then just specify text decoration underline. Right, this seems reasonable. And when I hover over it, notice that we have an underline that appears. 
So that's actually, you know, gives us a starting state is no underline, hover state, our ending state is an underline. So at this point, you might think that all we need to do is add a transition, right? You know, we have our property, which is text decoration, and we'll just do a transition to see what's going on. So I'm gonna transition, I'm gonna specify the all property, you know, you could specify text decoration, but what we're trying to do, the performance difference wouldn't be that, that much. So let's do point 0.2 seconds, and let's just set like an ease out of as their easing function. So I'm hovering over it, and notice what's happening though. The transition doesn't really seem to be kicking in. There really is no animation going on. You know, you might be wondering what's going on here. Everything's spelled correctly, everything looks fine. Now, here's a little detail that really we haven't hit upon in our previous videos and content, and that is that not every CSS property can be animated. As it turns out, text decoration is one of those properties. There's a list of animatable properties that we maintain, and I'll make sure to put a link to it in the description, but a handful of them are the ones we've always seen, like your transforms, your background colors, and so on. So what we need to do is find a property that's actually animatable. And that property, as it turns out, is going to be the border property, the one that is actually responsible for displaying an outline on whatever element you actually are, are outlining basically. So let's go ahead and set text decoration none is the correct one for LIA, our default look. But when we hover over it though, we don't want to use text decoration. Instead, let's specify a border property. In fact, I'll use the border bottom shorthand property because we only care about the bottom of the, the border. So it's gonna be an underline. So we'll make it four pixels wide. We'll give it a solid, you know, solid fill or a solid style. And we'll give it a background that matches our text color, which is 0066FF. Okay, great. Now when I hover over it, notice what you see. You see that an underline is properly appearing. And that's kind of cool, right? You know, it looks kind of neat and we have the effect that we're kind of interested in, in having, you know, and seeing. But notice what you see about the underline. Like pay really close attention if you're not able to notice it. Notice that the underline isn't exactly fading into view. It's actually growing. It starts off at like what seems like zero pixels and then grows in size to four pixels. And if you look at what our markup is doing, that kind of makes sense, right? By default, we have no border button specified, so probably a value of zero pixels. And the property that's being animated is really the, the border width property. So we're going from zero pixels to four pixels. So if the effect you want is one where the underline is growing from a small size to a large size, then this is great. But more than likely though, we're trying to get the fading effect going, right? So for what we need to do for that is find a different property to animate, preferably not border bottom. And so what we're gonna do for this case is f pick a property that is actually gonna fade something in without modifying what you see or what the visibility of it, the whole content is. And the way we're gonna do that is by toggling with the color values. And here's how we're gonna do it. So first, we need to set a default color. So we set a border bottom, same as four pixels, solid. And here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of specifying the color as a hex value, I'm gonna specify as an RGBA value. This is basically red, green, blue, and alpha. Alpha, which represents transparency. And that's what's really gonna help us with what we're trying to do here. So what I've done now is specify a red value of zero, a green value of 102, and a blue value of 255. Nothing, nothing too crazy going on there. But the alpha value is currently a zero. It's a value from zero to one. One means it's fully visible, as you can see right now when I specify one. But if I specify zero, it's completely invisible. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna guess what I'm gonna do next. So I'm gonna copy this value here, overwrite the border bottom property inside the hover style rule. And instead of having it be zero, I'll have it be one at this point. And so what I'm saying is that the color is going to be for the underline, is going to be invisible when we have it in the default state. But when we hover over it, the color will be visible because the alpha property is now different. And now notice when I hover over our elements, our link elements, the underline appears as we'd want it to, and it actually fades into view, which is kind of the effect that we, we were kind of going for, right? So that's pretty cool. So now let's go back, let's change something else. So we said let's change the background color. So one effect is the underline, and that's, you know, that's pretty straightforward. Now let's do an underline of the background itself, or sorry, let's change the background color. What does underline the background even mean? I have no idea. So for what I'm gonna do right now is just, let's just go ahead and delete the border bottom properties that we set earlier. And so for the underline color, by default you can see that there is no, I'm sorry, there's no background color. I'm not sure I'm hung up on the word underline. There's no background color specified. And when you hover over it, let's specify a background color of, you know, let's pick a very light blue. Let's specify B5E1FFF. Okay, and so this is really all it takes. Notice when I hover over our links, 
you'll see that the background color kind of appears. And notice that because we have no padding applied to our link element, you the, the background seems really you know scrunched together with the text. And we can fix that by just giving a, uh, giving a padding value. Let's give it a padding value of, let's say, five pixels. And once you've done that, notice that we now have a little bit more breathing room for our background color to appear. So this is one really simple effect that you can add that kind of makes your links look a little bit different than the rest of the text that you might be might be dealing with. But what we really want to do though is wrap it up with the, the sliding example that I showed you earlier. Now the sliding example is it seems kind of complex, but it's pretty straightforward. And let's look at it, go back to our slides just to to make sure how we do that. So the way we create that effect is by relying on a background gradient. And the way the gradient works is this. We have a linear gradient that starts off transparent at the top and goes to blue at the bottom. And we have gradient stops both at the very top and at the middle to basically create a very sharp edge where our colors go from completely being transparent to completely being blue. So when you think of a gradient, you think of a color that's just gradually changing from one value to another. But in this case, we're using that same trick to have it suddenly change from one value to another. And, you, and when you look at the markup, you'll see why. So, by, so we're setting a background color, linear gradient going from top to bottom, where half, the, half of it is transparent, the half is blue. So this is what the default state looks like. And this is clearly the effect that we want. So what we want to do though is make sure by default the background is fully transparent and when you hover over it the blue part of the background slides into view. And the way we do that is by actually doubling the height of the background itself. And that has the effect of what we just, what I just described right now where what you see by default is only the part of the gradient that is completely transparent so the user doesn't really see anything about what's going on. And when we hover over it, we'll just slide the part of the background that is invisible, which is the part of the gradient, the blue color, and have that slide into, into view. So that seems like, you know, that seems like a tall order, but it's pretty straightforward. It just requires knowing how to use the, the background, the gradient background. And that's really where the complexity is. So here's what we're gonna do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is specify our background itself. So I'm going to do background. And it's going to be a little bit verbose. And if you're not familiar with the linear gradient CSS function, it's something that you might need to learn about separately. I might have a different video in the future. But I specified a background property, specifying linear gradient. And here's where the, the markup's going to come in. To bottom. This kind of indicates the orientation, the various links are going to be coming into play. And I'm going to indent it just purely for formatting reasons. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to do RGBA. And let's do a value of 181, 255, 255 and zero, okay? And then now, this, I'm gonna specify the gradient stop, and it's gonna be 0%, great. Next, let's, I'm actually gonna copy and paste this a few times, guys, just to make it, make it much easier to have to deal with, you know, it's gonna be a lot of repetition. So I have four stops, basically at 0%, all with the same exact value. And let me just close the end to make it look, make it look proper. So what we're doing here is the first stop at 0%, we have the color we had, the background color we had before with an opacity of zero. At the 50% mark, we're gonna continue having the exact same color fully transparent and have it go from zero to 50%, which is great. But now we want the gradient to be fully visible, we want the color to fully show. So I'm gonna specify at the 50% mark, another gradient stop, which is this line right here, but the color is fully visible. And likewise, I'm gonna make the color fully visible here and have this gradient stop be at 100%. And once I've done this, notice what you see in the example on the side right here. You'll see kind of what we showed in the slides earlier. The top half of our link is completely transparent. The bottom half has a blue background color. In fact, let me just get rid of the hover color so that we don't get too confused about what's going on here. And now what I'm gonna do is add some of the properties that we talked about earlier to make it, make it both double in size as well as make some minor cleanup work. So the first thing we want to do is this. We don't want the background to repeat. So I'm going to set so the background repeat property to no repeat. And now here's where we're going to set the size of the background to be double in height. So that way we get the effect where the top half is in transparent, the bottom half is blue. So I'm going to set background size. And I'm going to use percentage values here. Horizontal size is going to be 100%, which makes sense. And then the height is going to be 200% of the element we're applying it to, which is our link. And once I've done that, notice that our link seems to completely have, have disappeared. And all we need to do right now is to make our link appear is in the hover property, specify the background position, 
and reset what we did earlier. So instead of having background position be essentially what it is by default, we'll make the height of the, hor the horizontal position zero, we're not changing that, we'll make the height be, uh, sorry, the vertical position be 100%. And what this means is that when I hover over it, we're literally shifting the, the link itself from where it is right now to 100%, which makes it fully visible. And our blues are kind of like a little weird a blue, weird blue color, right? And it's because I kind of mistyped the value. It's not 181, 255, 255, it's actually 225. That's an important detail because, you know, we want, we want to get it right. So now, now our link looks respectable and something we can actually show off to our friends and family. All right, so there's basically a, a very quick video that talks about the, the three ways you have for making links really come to life. And what I really want to highlight is it doesn't take a lot of effort to make your links do something different when you interact with them. You can keep it as simple as either having the background color just change or having an underline appear, or you can do something more complex like we did at the very end where we had the background color actually slide into view. And if you surf the web, you might see all kinds of more interesting and crazier examples. Like I think The Verge, for example, has, an exa you know, has their links actually animate and wiggle by animating an SVG that they said is a background image and then animating some of the SVG properties to give it this like animated wiggle effect, which is pretty neat. And that might be a video in the future for us to look at. But for now, I hope you enjoy this and you can create more and cooler links and, and share it with me as well. I'm, I'm really, I'd love to see what you guys are all, all up to. So if you need any help, the easiest way to get in contact with me or anyone else who's willing to help you out is http colon slash slash forum.group.com where me and a lot of other people will be more than happy to talk about links all day if, if you so choose. And you can also contact me via email and Twitter and Facebook and, and posting comments in the forums. But for technical help, the, the formatting options and the character limitations and all of that make the forms the best place for you to for you to post your questions. So, so do that. And of course, if you found this video interesting, tell your friends and enemies, you know, good, interesting links benefit everybody. So people you like and people you don't like should probably take advantage of making their links look really nice. If you found the video interesting, hit subscribe so you can be notified when more videos come into play. And if you enjoy like learning about web development or finding some cool links and interesting visual pixel art kind of stuff, follow me at Krupa where I frequently tend to post things that I find interesting, which I feel you might find interesting as well. And of course, buy a book where, you know, by any book actually, but more specifically, my new book called Creating Web Animations and Bring Your UIs to Life, where I explain not only how to create this effect, but a whole lot of effects that really touch upon how you can use animations and CSS to really do some interesting, fun things, things that people might probably like. So with that, I will see you guys next time.